Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of our Business Perspective series. This is a series where we speak to pet business owners and entrepreneurs in the pet industry to talk about their journeys as a business owner. Today I'm joined by Pagan Aspinall who is the owner and founder of What A Load Of Knit which is a company that specializes in hand knitted clothing and dog apparel. So I'm going to hand over to Pagan uh, in just a second. As your first question Pagan, I would love for you to introduce yourself and your business and tell us a bit more about what is What A Load Of Knit, where did the idea come from, what's your journey been so far yeah hi um so what a load of knit came about because basically you can't really buy that much good knitwear for sight hounds <clears throat> and excuse me i have a huge lurcher who doesn't really fit into a lot of clothes like i had bought a lot of um kind of store-bought um knitwear for him and it just it just doesn't work <laughs> it like slips down his shoulders or it's too short um and I was just kind of getting frustrated. I just wanted him to have woolly jumpers. Um, and I already knew how to knit. My mum taught me when I was quite young, um, but I'd never really paid that much interest in it. And then I kind of had this project to develop my own patterns and I just can't stop knitting now. <laughs> um, and I was kind of like, you know, these are really good. Um, I'm sure other people have had this problem. And so I want to share them. So I sell my patterns and I sell my knits as well. And so where is it at the moment that you're you're mainly selling those patterns and those knits? Yeah, I sell at the minute I sell on Etsy and I also have my own website, uh, which is whataloadofknit.com. And so you said it was uh, a skill that you'd initially picked up when you were younger, your mum had taught you to knit. What was it about once you'd made that connection between, oh, my dog needs some custom knits and this is a skill that I know how to do. How did you go about developing that into a point where you were designing your own patterns? Because I know that that's not an easy to <laughs> design patterns and get the sizing and everything right. What was your journey in developing those skills to make it to that point? Yeah, it, it took a while. <laughs> we started simple on kind of like snoods and things like that, which are, you know, just like a nice, easy, like rectangle and things. But it basically was almost like I taught myself to knit from scratch because I don't know, I, I'd never paid it that much attention. So I had like knit mid scarves and things before, but never really thought about, um, you know, incorporate like what, what kind of yarn am I using? Am I using the right needles? Like it had just been like needle, yarn, let's just knit a scarf. And so then it became this process of basically learning like all the technical things. Um, and that took a while, took a while to get used to. A lot of yarn bought and been like, I don't, what is this? I don't need this. <laughs> um, and then the next process was, yeah, trying to knit something for my dog. <laughs> um, and it kind of came from doing a lot of test knits from free patterns that were available, working out, you know, how do I even make a jumper? How do I make a jumper for me? I've never done that before. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, measuring up my dog and working out how I was going to apply just jumper making to him. Um, yeah, it was tricky. It took a lot of attempts. He had a lot of really, really poorly fitted jumpers, <laughs> um, which were all frogged eventually. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I remember the first one I made. I was just like, oh my God, he can wear it out. <laughs> And just just for um, the non uh, yarn folk out there, you just said um, that you frogged your jumpers. Can you just explain to us what what that I means? I unraveled them all painstakingly by hand, <laughs> <laughs> which is not ideal, but <laughs> it's no. part of the process, isn't it? Yeah, it it took a lot of attempts. I think it was something I was on like jumper number ten or eleven by the time I was like, you can probably wear this now. <laughs> And so in that exploration process, were you at that point thinking about this as a potential business or was this purely sort of like a recreational hobby for you at that stage? Yeah, so I already had, I already set up what a load of knit because I was selling the snoods and kind of like allowing that to pay for my yarn <laughs> to, to make jumpers. So I already had um, kind of the principles in place. It was very rudimentary. Um, and so I was like, I think this is going to be something that other people want when I was making it. And it's kind of documenting the process as well on my Instagram a little bit, you know, 
on my story saying design um you know product testing today <laughs> and it would just be him in a sack um <laughs> but yeah so the idea was there i just wasn't 100 percent sure like how it would be implemented yet again going through that experimentation phase um you were obviously knitting and unraveling a lot and you had um testing out loads of different yarns did you come to any sort of like conclusions that there were particular yarns that were a better um material that worked best for dogs how have you made sure that the products that you've ended up having at the moment are sort of the the best quality and the best support that they can be for for a dog in particular rather than is there any difference between dogs and humans for example yes um i do have a couple of different materials available now my standard is like a really strong acrylic uh which is it's not something that i would particularly want to wear um and you know there are problems with acrylic but it's very sturdy the stuff that i use um in a lot of my knits and that's just you know a lot of people don't have experience in caring for like delicate knitwear and especially with dogs that like, you need to wash them more um <laughs> so that's what i went for i'm looking at some super wash walls as well at the minute so um nice walls but you can stick in the washing machine it's just another thing that's on my to-do list um but we've also i have got some um like a matching jumper to this which is alpaca um it's a bit more fragile and um uh, you know you need to give it a bit more love so um my dog does not wear that for runs in the park <laughs> i think that's probably what a lot of people again when people don't know knitting or that sort of crafting process um when you say yarn for example a lot of people will just associate that as wool or they'll use wool and yarn interchangeably but for a lot of people they don't realize that the, the different makeups of the different fibers actually have different qualities so when you're saying there that acrylic is good for dogs and, and the washing and stuff for example alpaca and wool uh they don't really machine wash very well it, it's more of a hand washing process yeah. to make sure that you maintain the fiber whereas the acrylic can be sort of put on a 30 degree machine wash um, and can be done repeatedly so so obviously makes more sense for a dog that's going to get dirty yeah, exactly. um, can you explain a little bit more about what the benefits of choosing that acrylic are and and how that was sort of like a, a decision made within the business yeah um so the yarn that i used the most i chose it took a while like i say i bought a lot of yarn and i was like i don't want this <laughs> um i chose it for a number of reasons the first of all is the acrylic just because it's it's super durable you do need to um you know kind of shave off any uh pills so like plucks not plucks exactly um those little uh, bubbles that kind yeah, of bubbles you do have to treat it for that um now and again um which is a downside but it does just wash nicely. Um, the colours don't really run on it, which I think is quite important because I sell kind of multicoloured jumpers. Um, and other things that I chose it for were, it just comes in a great range of colours, this yarn. It's quite soft though for acrylic. Um, so it's not too horrible to work with or for your dog to wear. Um, and it's also just a nice thickness. It's like a good balance between, you know, having delicate stitches but not taking too long. You were already selling your snoods and your cowls and things like that. Why was it that you didn't go with humans and you chose dogs instead? Um, do you know, I just never really thought of making anything for myself until I'd made it for the dog. Um, I don't know, like you get a sight hound and a big pot, not a big pot, but a lot of like you know they're cold dogs i started out i bought a lot of things from and i still do buy so many outfits for him uh but i was kind of like oh i kind of want to supplement this myself without as well spending a load of money so i started making accessories for him i used to have, sorry side note i used to have a rabbit that i made hats for and i kind of wanted to do something similar okay. for him but <laughs> i didn't think that because these were like felt hats i didn't think that they would be quite right so i went for knitting um yeah, and then I only started making, well, I said like I tried with, I experimented with some jumper patterns as well when I was working out how to make the dog jumper, but I only really made myself things that I wear now. Kind of only in the last few months have I done that. Um, I guess it's a bigger project as well, so it's a bit more of a commitment. Um, and I think the other reason is just affordability because, you know, a hand knitted jumper for a person, it's going to cost a lot. And I want my products to be a little bit more accessible. You know, they still 
have a price tag because they're still hand knitted but um i think it's a bit more accessible how long have you been running the business now yeah i've had it for almost a year it feels like way longer I felt like i've been making snoods forever for dogs but yeah i started it in november last year okay um, so you're coming up to first birthday yeah. how has that first year been for you how, how have people received um what you've been putting out there it's been really really good <laughs> um summer not so good uh no one needs knits in summer I still like have a little steady flow um the reaction was really really positive and i had a really good first winter it was very busy around christmas uh I remember spending like christmas eve knitting even though people wouldn't get them still <laughs> like, they'll get them straight after christmas um and then summer was quiet and I also struggled a little bit. Well, I struggled a little bit with social media anyway. I don't really have a big interest in it. And so I kind of struggled with uh, engaging maybe. Uh, and summer was quiet anyway. And then I went to Dogfest and so many questions and compliments. And I was like, I need to ride this wave of positivity. Um, and I had already like made my website by this point, but I hadn't really got much interest. And then I got home from Dogfest. So I was like, I'm going to be really good at social media, which I still am doing. It's been like a month and yeah the uptake has been really really good again and i think it's like partly my engagement and also um like coming towards the winter months i'm starting to get christmas orders already and yet this last 30 days i've made uh well i've had as many as much money in sales in these last 30 days as i've had for the rest of the year um so it's been really popular again so really that exposure that you got at dog fest was was really helpful for you yeah i think it really helped my mindset as well i was kind of maybe in a bit of a rut and i had covid as well the month before and normally i knit almost every day and i hadn't knit for three weeks and i was just like in a real slump so it was really good to get compliments and feel good about um yeah what i do so yeah well, we obviously, we first met you there as yeah. well. You and your dog were wearing matching knits, which <laughs> obviously everybody was giving you compliments. <laughs> they were fantastic. Um, and so it's it's one of those things, obviously, you're building that momentum now. But like you say, social media can be a difficult thing to tackle at the beginning, um, especially when you're starting an account from scratch. Yeah. <laughs> often the case with a lot of pet, pet, not just pet business owners but business owners in general they they kind of want results and they want it quick but social media is one of those things where it's long-term growth so i i know i'm very impatient with social media <laughs> i post something and i want it to go viral but it, it's it's hard to do that especially when you're just going down organic growth without the, the paid promotion or paid yeah. ads behind it it's good to get that kind of like validation like <laughs> Bad to, to know yeah. actually you know there is an audience for this even though it's taking a little bit of time to, to put the effort in and, and to grow the audience there is an audience there and I know that what I'm working towards is worth it yeah and I think like sometimes yeah it can be a little bit disheartening like oh this hasn't done that well and then you have to realize especially for me that yeah I'm making everything by hand and it takes me a while so if something went viral it would it would be no help to me like i wouldn't be able to deal with having a lot of bit like too much business so it's irrelevant and so like what i'm doing now where i've just got i've got quite a nice community like i speak to quite a lot of people quite regularly and i think that's much more healthy for me than having a big following where i just can't i can't even keep up with it so in, in terms of sort of fulfilling orders have you thought about what would happen when you get to the point where perhaps you the amount of orders that you're you're getting outweigh the amount of time that you can spend knitting have you thought that far yeah. in advance or have any plans <laughs> how to tackle that <laughs> yeah um it, it's difficult so i think my plan is i've not reached that step yet but i think my plan is to just increase wait times or do pre-orders like a wait list um it's kind of a we'll deal with it when we get to it situation, or if we get to it but um <laughs> I keep up for now. I do give quite a long lead time, especially on bigger projects, and just people have to deal with that because it is handmade. Um, but yeah, if I'm overwhelmed, then my plan is to kind of be like, you're gonna have to sign up to a waiting list, and that would be a lovely position to be in. <laughs> 
have you considered at all bringing other members in? So much like the, the pet industry, yeah. there's a huge community of petpreneurs, um, which is what we, we refer to pet business owners as a book your pet. Um, there's a huge community of petpreneurs who are all really willing and, and um, wanting to support and help champion other pet businesses as they, they come up through the ranks. But the, the knitting and crafting community is very much the same. And there's a whole community of knitters out there that, um, you know, they they knit for business, but without doing it for their own patterns. Have you considered at all, perhaps, if you're able to write those patterns to have a, a team of knitters behind you to help you fulfill those orders? We have mentioned it, I've uh, been discussing it with my partner, because we're like, how do we kind of scale this? We don't think that's the answer, because we don't think that maybe I charge enough for an hourly rate. <laughs> uh, which maybe I need to like build my confidence still to her. Uh, <laughs> to charge a, a good hourly rate but um we don't think that's the answer i think we would have to put prices up significantly to do that um i have thought about asking my mom <laughs> uh, so maybe expand into um include my mom and get her up to scratch on what we're doing but um at the minute i don't think bringing someone external in is the answer i do really want to teach my partner how to knit but he really resists it <laughs> could have him doing it for free <laughs> but it is, it is about finding that balance yeah. within business of as you say wanting to keep your prices affordable for the customer but also being able to fulfill the value and and quality of that yeah. as well so there, there is a fine balance and we've got our book your pet membership which is a resource hub for people who are looking to build and grow a pet business and one of the things that we do cover in there is sort of like when it gets to that point of expanding a pet business what's yeah. the best for you to go down and so you you've already sort of touched on you've explored that option but it doesn't feel right for your business at the moment so what other ways can you yeah continue to expand and grow the business so we, we kind of cover topics and things like that within in some of the modules in there but it is really an individual experience for every business yeah it's difficult to kind of think about when it's just some because it's quite personal as well i feel my knits so it's like it's difficult but i think one thing that we've discussed quite a bit is going down more of a digital route and making it almost um the primary focus is selling a bunch of different patterns for your pets but giving people the resources to also make them so people who might not know how to knit like making videos because a lot of the patterns they're quite simple like they don't really take a lot of um complicated techniques so i kind of want to go down that avenue it, quite a big time investment so it's going to be a summer job but yeah. um that's kind of what i think is going to be one of my focuses moving forward i think that's a great shout as well because again one of the things that we talk about in some of the the modules in our, our membership is a successful business is a business that can diversify its services so it's not just focused on revenue streams coming in from one particular thing yeah. so you know it's not just about selling the jumpers but if you can diversify and you can sell courses or run workshops and teach people how to have the skills to knit the patterns so they buy the patterns you've already got three or four additional income streams in yeah, your business exactly. you, that, that would be a, a, a natural progression and a way to grow the business without having to bring in those external yeah exactly and like digital products are great um you spend quite a while making them and then they're just there like you know i've got a couple updates i think i want to make on the patterns i've got at the minute but they're very minor and just keeping them up to date with what i think is best um on the pattern so that is kind of what i want to go down and maybe um kind of knit it yourself boxes as well where you get your yarns and your needles I think are a really nice introduction as well yeah I've, I've seen actually a lot of subscription boxes so yeah. people do it sort of like like a hello fresh kind yeah. of thing where on a monthly basis you receive a little package that includes your yarn your needles a little pattern or a little booklet of patterns with yeah um you know here's the yarn here's what you can make from it and so i think those kinds of things work quite nicely as well as a recurring income rather than just a, a one-off yeah. purchase and so we've we've talked a lot there about the future of what a load of knit let's go back into the past so you're approaching um the point of your first birthday what do you know now as a pet business owner that you wished you'd have known a year ago oh uh the sizes of pets <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
just like didn't really have a good understanding of sizing when i this is when i very first started i was just like snood this is snood you can buy snood and then um yeah i have these oh, do i have one i don't think i do I have these little like um almost like a little balaclava thing with a pom-pom on top that your dog can wear and i was like just like this size is fine and then i got an order almost immediately for um an english bull an english bulldog so they're huge they have massive heads <laughs> it's just like oh my god i have not considered this at all like how am i gonna make this fit i did it took a really long time to work out and i obviously i should have considered things like that but i kind of my mindset was so like sight hounds that's what i have that's everyone that i follow on instagram and so i just like kind of forgot there were other dogs <laughs> when, when someone places an order how do you go about collecting the details like what the, what the breed yeah. is what the sizing is how do you make that order personalized yeah. to them i have sizings now <laughs> Um, so I have a sizing chart and you just select your size. Um, so it, it just, it, that didn't exist at first. I don't think I had a full understanding because I started on Etsy. I didn't have a full understanding of how to set things up either. It's, it's not a hundred percent intuitive. Um, so that was <laughs> a little, a little difficult and I probably, um, spent way too long making those things, but now like snoods and kind of like the standard jumpers i have a really kind of second nature i can i've got one jumper called the ezra jumper and i've made so many of it that i can literally knit that in my sleeve <laughs> to any size or, or, or so at the minute i only make jumpers for sight hounds um and that's well it's partly just the reason that i started because i couldn't find any jumpers for sight hounds the other reason is because i don't have another dog so I can't, I want to make sure, you know, the size is correct and I don't get, you know, every single measurement on the dog. I just have back length, chest, waist and neck. My plan is to add other dogs. It will probably just be the category of other dog. <laughs> um, but yeah, I need to work on a pattern for that. I'm going to be working with my parents' dog because they've got an Australian Shepherd. And I think it'll be a case that I just collect a few more measurements from people. Um, if you want any measurements from dogs, you always feel free to reach out to book your pet. We've all got dogs, different size, shape, <laughs> breeds. So if you need any measurements. That would probably be really helpful. I've got a Jack Russell running around here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I can volunteer him. <laughs> that would be really helpful. It's the kind of... Um, like the distance between front legs that I think can be quite variable. You can have like a really broad uh, gap between their front legs. Um, and my dogs are basically like his legs basically rub together. So it's just <laughs> difficult to know. And I don't want to send people things that don't fit their pets. Absolutely. Well, as I say, if we can support yeah. them, we're more than happy to. Um, let's just touch on your marketing at the moment. So we've, we've touched on briefly that you you know you've, you've upped the social game um since going out to dogfest you obviously went to dogfest which was a great networking opportunity for you what other avenues of marketing and promotion have you gone down not a great deal i've got some business cards now which i'm very proud of i was really brave and gave some out when i went i went into leeds the other weekend <laughs> um i don't i struggle i met someone at dogfest who um the, the dog was dressed in this incredible outfit. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And she just immediately pulled out this business card. And I was like, I need this confidence. So I'm trying to be more like that. Um, in terms of other things, I don't do a great deal. I'm pretty reliant on Instagram, um, which at the minute is bringing in a fair amount. And then kind of the Etsy's natural promotion as well, which I do seem to get quite a lot of people through Etsy who haven't been on my Instagram previously. But that is pretty much it at the minute. Okay, and uh, have you considered any other avenues that you could go down? Because as well as Etsy, there are uh, websites like Ravelry where you could also send patterns, but there's also, um, from a, a sort of PR angle, um, you could look at uh, craft publications. So a lot of people who are in a similar position to yourselves, these craft magazines often put out calls for submissions for projects to go into their magazines and it kind of puts you in in a national publication your face your business the name of your business and, and a, a, an example of your patterns so it can really increase 
sort of like a visibility of your brand in that way and for the magazines that I used to work with they would do you know feature profiles and stuff on on their designers and things so have you ever considered doing something like that I haven't considered that but it does sound excellent so <laughs> <laughs> well, another I'm, thing for the to-do list <laughs> I think a lot of people who come into owning their own business they look at things and go right it's a digital age so I need to just be on social media or I need a website but there's often a lot of offline things yeah you like you say going around and handing out business <laughs> cards people forget that those traditional things have been around for so long because they work <laughs> yeah and I, I, I do get basically any time I go out with my dog and he's in some kind of knitwear we get at least one person coming over and asking about it and like we literally went out for a walk at the weekend just to the village we live near I was like, I don't want to take business cards we're just going for a walk and then I had someone coming over being like I've really struggled to find a knitting pattern or a jump a knitted jumper for my sight hound I was like business cards why have i done this so now apparently i have to have them in my pocket at all times exactly you um, never know where, where you're going to find these people yeah yeah one thing i really do want to do is um a craft market which i think would be really nice and just trying to weigh up what the best option is with that because because it's dog focused also a lot of things are made to order but i don't think that's a huge issue because it can have little products that aren't but because it's dog focused, you kind of want somewhere that's dog friendly or there's going to be a lot of dogs there. Like dog fest, but that is way too expensive for me. <laughs> uh, so I'm kind of looking at some options or maybe thinking about like um, a collaboration of other like very small businesses having a joint stall or something. Um, and I think that would be a really nice way of promoting in person. Absolutely. And what you're saying there again about collaboration, it comes back to that whole community aspect. Yeah. Like I said, the, the knitting community is huge. The pet business industry is huge. So there's so many people out there at the, at the same stages of building their business or a little bit further ahead or people who have still got ideas, but everybody is really friendly and really yeah. willing to support each other. And that's what we kind of want to promote at Book Your Pet is that we are trying to build a community of petpreneurs who are there to support and help each other we are petpreneurs who are helping to support people like you um and we want to do everything that we can to do that which is why we've got our software why we've got our membership and um, why we've got our, our community so it really is about forging those partnerships and not thinking about people who are doing similar things to you as competitors more like friends that you you have healthy competition with <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely a worry at first when I first started. I was kind of like, oh, are other people going to be judgy or like, I don't know, like a, a bit of anxiety. And then actually, probably some of the small businesses, especially local ones, like in the Manchester area, are people I interact with most uh, on social media and like have quite a good like relationship with. I think it's it's pretty nice. And I don't think there's anyone who's like, too similar to me as well which is always nice everyone's a little bit different like fleeces or uh, collars and things so it's quite nice to like i buy all their things and spend all my money on that so <laughs> But it's good you're supporting the community yeah exactly <laughs> hopefully this community are supporting you in return and um, speaking of supporting other people so do you have any advice that you would give to somebody who is just looking to start out their pet business i would say just do it <laughs> because it's not too scary but make sure you know you're setting aside enough time to both work on your business but also for yourself because it can be a bit overwhelming um and I think my other advice would be, and I struggle to follow it, but just like value your time and make sure, you know, if you're spending time on something, it's worth it. And you're going to, you know, the compensation, it doesn't have to be financial, but it could be like investment in your company. You just make sure it's worth it. Because I do struggle with that. Yeah, I, th I think a lot of people have that kind of when they're pricing their services for example they a lot of people underprice because yeah. they have the confidence to say no my product or my service is worth the time yeah. effort everything that I put into it and me as an individual I am worth that fee so I think that is something that a lot of people struggle to come to terms with but again we've got um, some advice in our membership on how to price services effectively yeah. for petpreneurs but it is really comes down to having that <clears throat> excuse me that inner confidence to go yes I I did this and so I deserve this yeah it's definitely a confidence thing um 
Well, for me particularly, I just I was like, oh, but I mean, you don't want it if it's like that. Uh, but it's, I'm getting better and, yeah, trying to really crack down as well on myself, like actually timing in it, being like, how long does this take? We need to feed that back into the pricing and make sure everything, because, you know, also the cost of everything has gone up recently. So you've got to keep making things, like adjusting things accordingly just to, you know, make you feel like you're not just wasting your time. Yeah, and I think I think that's really important to mention as well, how you, you've timed yourself to, to kind of put the price on things because time is the only commodity that we can't really get back. Once yeah. it's gone, it's gone. So making sure that, because it, it's easy to sit down and say, okay, well, I'm going to, this jumper is going to cost me, it's going to take me this amount of time to knit. So I'm going to sell it at this price. But when you sit down and you actually start knitting and it becomes a much longer process, but you haven't changed the price, then suddenly you're giving away your time yeah. so I think again it's something that a lot of people don't take into consideration like groomers as well for example they could go okay well doing this particular kind of grooming will take me this length of time but then when it comes to larger breeds or breeds with more particular hair it takes yeah. longer so that they don't really consider that there are those differences that will affect their time and again end up giving it away for free so before i let you go just as a, a final piece let everybody know where they can find you online on socials where can they check out what a load of knit and get hold of some of your amazing products as well yeah um my main social don't really use any others is instagram which is what a load of knit underscore no <laughs> what a load of underscore knit know where it was um and yeah i'm really active on there at the minute and hoping to continue being so go and like my reels <laughs> which i'd never made before um and i've also got my website uh which is what a load of knit.com my prices there are slightly cheaper than my etsy because i don't get charged as much to sell there perfect well thank you so much for joining us pagan um pagan will be featured on all of the Book Your Pets uh, socials uh, across Instagram, Facebook. We'll also be featuring her over on our blog, um, as well as on various other Book Your Pet platforms um, within the Book Your Pet community. So keep an eye out for more from Pagan over the next couple of weeks.